Hi everyone, I'm a food rheologist and I am currently on sabbatical. I'm making a short series of videos during my sabbatical to talk about rheology in everyday life. And this video is about rheology and texture. So I want to make it very clear at first that texture is something that humans experience. It's something that you measure when you touch something with your hands or when you put something in your mouth or when you brush up against something, it is not something we can measure with an instrument. So if you ever hear that rheology measures texture, it doesn't. It approximates what we do when we sense texture, but it actually doesn't really measure texture. But we can get an indication of what texture is going to be like, and that's really important when we are eating. So for example, I did a video about Nutella versus not Nutella. So I finally got myself a jar of Nutella because I always had this entire jar, it's mostly empty now, and I said, you know what, I can't deal with this lack of yield stress that this stuff has. Nutella has a yield stress, and so when I'm scooping it with my knife, I have a much different sensory experience because it's thicker, it stands up better on the knife, it doesn't flow back off the knife after I have it on the knife. And when I mix it with cocoa powder, because yes, I will eat Nutella straight mixed with cocoa powder, it's really good, try it. It has a different texture, and that's because its rheology is different. So it has a higher yield stress, it has a higher viscosity, and so it feels different when I put it in my mouth. We have the same thing going on with these two different pea soups. So this one is actually thicker than this one. And if you look at the labels, you can kind of tell. So if you look at this label, you see how that soup is kind of translucent and you can see a little bit below the surface versus this soup isn't that translucent. You can barely see anything under the surface there. This has a higher viscosity, especially because this tends to take the shape of its can. You know how cranberry jelly sometimes takes the shape of the can. You can pour it out a can shape. This does the same thing. It's actually kind of cool. When that happens, the liquid pools on top. And so what I do, because I like really thick pea soup, is drain that liquid off the top. It makes it even thicker. So the viscosity goes up. And that means when I heat it up, you get a drop in viscosity when you heat things up. That's just what happens. Then this ends up being a thicker soup than this guy. They also have different tastes because their ingredients are different. So this one just has peas and ham here, and this one's got carrots and potatoes in it. They're both good. They have different flavors because they have different ingredients. Rheology doesn't touch that. So that's something totally different. But rheology does show you the difference in viscosity, and that translates to a different mouthfeel. Now, viscosity is important with fluid things like water. You expect water to have a pretty low viscosity. If this was the consistency of pea soup or Nutella, that really wouldn't be very refreshing when you drank it. But viscosity becomes less important as your food gets more and more solid. Like this Nutella, which yes, it is still semi-solid, but it is acting now like a solid because you can spread it. So you can see this little picture on the front, you've got a knife, it's being spread on the toast, and so it is actually acting like a solid. If you remember from the viscoelastic video I did, that's solid-like behavior right here. And if you think about the bread on the Nutella label, if you're eating that piece of bread, you are experiencing texture, but viscosity has nothing to do with that because it is a solid. And the viscosity of a solid is infinite. So when we're testing things like the bread or even the Nutella, we don't just measure viscosity, we look at different things. So we might put this in something that's called a texture analyzer, which by the way doesn't analyze texture. Remember, texture is a sensory thing that is measured by humans. It just approximates what we might find in texture, but it has a little probe that'll squash a piece of bread and it'll tell you things. So force to compress that simulates the force to bite through that bread. So if you have a very chewy artisanal type sourdough, you want that force to be compressed to be a little bit higher than if you have something like Wonder Bread that's supposed to be super soft um, and you can bite through it and it's not really chewy, it's just supposed to be a nice soft bread. So those are some of the things that rheologists think about when they're testing foods is what's the end texture supposed to be like and then what rheological properties do I have to think about to make sure that my end texture is what I want like this Nutella and not something like this stuff which 
a little bit too runny, not enough of a yield stress. You need to fix the rheology on this. And that, half the time, ends up fixing the texture. And so that is part of the reason why we do the testing we do, to make sure that we have the eating experience we want and not an experience that's kind of subpar.